It is their eyewitness testimony of an event. Of the Lord Jesus crucified, dead and buried, and risen from the dead, and ascended in glory to heaven. That is, the faith of the church is not a body of ideas, philosophical, religious, social, or otherwise. It is the life of Christ that has destroyed death by his death and given life to those in the tombs. That is to say, the Acts of the Apostles shows us that the substance of the Christian faith, if you will, is not believing. As St. James says, even the devils believe, and they tremble, and it does them no good. No, the substance of the Christian faith is the healing and the cleansing of our soul and body, and the transfiguring of our death into the death of all that separates us from God and makes us dead men to God. The substance of the, of the Christian faith is the transfiguration of our dying into our being raised to life in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, this is not a cognitive idea that we argue about or that we parse any way we like or seek to defend an intellective argument. It is a living truth that is proved as soon as we start doing it. As soon as we start walking in it and living in it. We believe in Jesus Christ not as a cognitive datum, but by uniting ourselves to him in the likeness of his death. And that means again by putting to death all of our earthly members, which is not our arms or our legs, they're invisible things. Our earthly <coughs> members, as St. Paul spells them out, are malice, anger, lust, envy, greed, our love for corruption and impurity, all these invisible things that produce visible and palpable effects in our souls and in our bodies. Restlessness, uneasiness, anxiety, fear, anger, despair, high blood pressure, ulcers, headaches, and many other symptoms. As soon as we believe in the Lord Jesus, as soon as we turn to Him in our inner man and trust in Him and begin striving to do as He commands, in that very instant, the minute we have turned, we can feel a holy illumination beginning to shine deep within us. We can feel a joy, a hope, a peace being sown within us. And we can feel ourselves invisibly, inwardly, being raised from death to life, from the power of this Word of God, that is the risen Lord Jesus Christ Himself, actively working in us to save us, to heal us, to cleanse us, and even to deify us. Now we are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, even though we do not see Him with our bodily eyes. We are believing in Him because we are experiencing the power of His Holy Spirit working in us, healing our soul deep within, as we present our soul and body to Him as instruments of righteousness, and as we subject our soul, our mind, and body to Christ, so that it is the law of faith that reigns in us, so that we are obedient to Christ, and no more to the desires of the flesh. So how can we state the point that we're trying to make? The Christian faith is lived on the ground, not in the air. It is lived in the heart, not in the head. The field in which the Christian faith is demonstrated is the soul, and in the deeds of the body, not in the discursive logic of the brain. 
For again, what we receive in the church is not a set of doctrines that we stubbornly hold on to against all odds. We receive the very body and blood of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what we keep and guard with our life. In all of this, notice that the attention of our mind is directed inward to the mystery of God that is Christ within you, and not outward to some Jesus as a datum of cognitive reasoning that is outside of us. We may see him, the church tells us, as we purify our senses, that is, as we put to death again all that is putting us to death, malice, greed, lust, sexual immorality, envy, pride. Again, note how all of these things are invisible. They cannot be seen. Though they produce effects in one's behavior <coughs> and in one's words, that can be seen. And what are the eyes of our mind focused on in its interior gaze? They're focused on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're focused on the mystery of the Virgin Mary. For without the Virgin Mary, there is no Lord Jesus Christ in God. She is the living temple. And it is in her that one comes upon the true Christ who was in the beginning. The true Christ, he who is in the bosom of the Father. And it became flesh of her and dwelt among us in the tabernacle of his body that he received from her. Apart from the Virgin Mary, whatever Christ one embraces is not the true Christ. For the Christ who is truly from God and who is truly incarnate, who truly suffered, died, and was buried and rose again, who alone can heal us from our sickness unto death and make us to become children of God, that Christ has come into the world through no other gate than that of the most blessed Panaria, the Virgin Mary Theodopos, the Mother of God. This Jesus is the only begotten God, as we read in John 1.18. We are talking about this in bright, at the Bright Monday Liturgy. It says, He is the only begotten God. And then in the Greek, it's very clear. It, it's very clear. It says, Ha-on. He who is in the bosom of the Father. He who is. That is to say that Jesus is being himself. Therefore note that being is not what it is. Being is he who is. He is the root of our being. We are rooted in who, not in what. And he is to be found in the root of our being, in our heart, in who we are, not in what we are. Well, he could also found in what we are, but you go deeper than the what. He, found, he is found in who we are. He is found where we, in our who, in our heart, open out into the deep beyond all things, and out unto God, and came and come into the image of God, Jesus Christ, he who is, in whom we came to be. You understand, all of this is invisible. You can't see being. You can see the effects of being. Because you came to be, and I can see you. But I can't see your being. I can't see who you are. In its, you know, if you will, in the, in the essence of your who. I can't see you. But I can see your body. Where did you come from? The church tells us you came from he who is. This Jesus then, he who is. He is the very God who appeared to Moses in the burning bush. The burning bush, the mystery of his Holy Mother, of the Lord's Holy Mother. This is the same Jesus that revealed his name to Moses, which is, guess what that name was? 
he who is our own. There on Mount Horeb, and he revealed himself to Moses in the form of uncreated divine fire that was burning in the bush but not consuming it, but instead making it to be all fire, luminous and most holy. We recognize that bush immediately as the emblem of the Holy Virgin Mary. That bush, therefore, is an emblem of us, for we are of the same nature as the Virgin. We are all bushes, as was she, and through her we now share our flesh and blood with the fire, the Lord God, He who is, who appeared to Moses in the bush, and in these last days in the flesh. The Lord Jesus Christ, then, who was crucified, dead, and buried, he is the uncreated fire of God, now burning in the bush of our flesh and blood. For we have received this fire. We have received Jesus Christ, His very body and blood, as our food and drink in the Church's Holy Eucharist. He burns within us, and He does not consume us. But He makes us all holy fire and heavenly light. And if we in our inner man are keeping the eyes of our soul invisibly on Him and on His name, and if we are directing the invisible energy of our heart, the movement of our will towards this fire that is burning within us and not allowing our will to go after sin and death, if we are striving to subject our mortal bodies, our soul, heart, and mind to the law of Christ, to the law of faith, the law of love and obedience, so that it is Christ the King who is reigning in us, and not the Prince of this world, the Lord of death, then Christ it is who is invisibly, spiritually, mystically, truly making us to be gods and sons of the Most High. Blessed are those who believe even though they do not see. Buried with Christ Jesus in our baptism, eating and drinking Christ in Holy Eucharist, the mystery of the risen Christ is within us. Placing the wounds of our soul into His wounds, we are healed. For we have received the fire bodily into the bush of our souls and bodies in Holy Eucharist. The healing power of the Lord's cross is now working invisibly within us. And we can see it, we experience it invisibly, to the degree that we anchor our, our whole being in this living hope that has been sown in us through the sacramental mysteries of the Church, which is in truth the very body and blood of the crucified and risen Jesus Christ. Amen. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen.